Hi, I'm Lise Colucci. I'm one of the life coaches at Queen Being. I wanted to talk to you today about an experience I had that directly related to a question that a person asked. The topic is around changing your self-talk, changing your inner dialogue, and going on with life when something happens that throws a wrench in your day, or something happens that triggers a negative response in yourself. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. So earlier I was working with a video with Angie Atkinson. I love Angie. I look up to Angie and I adore Angie. I don't want to do things to upset Angie. Not that she would do anything bad, but my inner dialogue then turns into negativity. So let me, let me start over with what happened. Let me start from the beginning. So we're working on a video. We do an entire video and I don't hit record. So the entire thing is lost. Number one, I've wasted an hour of someone's very valuable time. Angie is busy, and I know this, and she had somewhere to go right away, and I felt I just sat there feeling pretty stupid. In any case, what happened after that is where it gets interesting, because we were just talking, answering questions from people. One of the questions, let me read that to you now, and this is the one that was sticking with me as this happened. So the question was, how, how can people who have been raised by narcissistic parent deal with relationships with their spouses and children so they can avoid minimized chances of repeating the NARC codependency cycle? Now, you may be thinking, how does that relate? Well, what happened was, as soon as I hung up or left the chat with Angie, I instantly went into self-loathing, self-criticism, self-doubt, all of the good that was created from doing this video was completely diminished. And not only did we not have a video to help other people, but I felt like I had wasted her time and I had wasted my own time. And I had more importantly, maybe upset her or created a situation, you know, the things that happen in your head when you do something and it involves someone else. Now, I realized in that moment, what I was just explaining about the question that the person that I just read to you was that we have to look to ourselves. We have to change within ourselves, and that will affect how we relate to other people. And so, of course, I can't just dish out the advice and not take it myself. I went on and decided I'd give myself five minutes to just kind of sit with the disappointment, the upset, and, and the feelings that were negative and just let them be there. And I kind of, I sat there, I put a timer on, Kind of got bored sitting there waiting for it to end, but I did sit there and let myself feel those things. And then what happened was I got really motivated in that time to do something else. It's because I allowed myself the time to actually feel what I was feeling without judgment. I mean, yes, the feelings were judging, but I wasn't judging then secondary the feelings that I was having. So I wouldn't say, oh, you're so bad for having these feelings. I was just having them. And I realized that it is not my, I apologized. I, you know, Angie's great. Of course, you know, she understands and, and things happen and technology happens and whatever. So I realized that's, that's not my business to get into what Angie's feeling at that point. It's my business to take care of my own feelings. And my relationship with her is dependent on my relationship with myself. And so I went on to create an entire video after that point from one where I had another issue where my audio failed. You could hear the other person talking, but you could not hear me. So I took their clip and then I went on and found experts to help me out with the information because it was a topic that goes beyond narcissistic abuse into a community I'm not as familiar with. I have some familiarity, but I'm not within the community. So I went out and reached out to people in the community. And I, anyway, I created this whole video from the energy that was given from my not going into my negativity. So I took that negative energy and I let it be there for a minute. And then I used whatever I had left to fuel the next thing, which was something better. And when we sit in our negativity, we use all of our energy and we keep creating more and more energy for that negativity. So instead, if you can take that and use it for something else in your life, then you can turn it around to where 
you're actually taking these negative experiences and creating something good from them. And yes, I did just check to see if I'm recording now. <laughs> anyway, that, that, that experience helped a lot and I related it to Angie. And of course she wasn't angry with me. I mean, she, she confirmed everything I, I felt about it with my logical brain. And it was really helpful to have such a, uh, an understanding person on the other end. Now, when, when back to the, the original question the person had, how that can relate to it is when we work on ourself, the relationships in our life get better. Because what could have happened is I could have started feeling like Angie's judging me, Angie doesn't like me. You know, I could have gone into a really negative spin in my head. And that is a place I have gone in my past with a lot of people. And I could have allowed that to get in between my actual relationship with Angie which would do no good for either one of us and is frankly not a very mature place to have an adult relationship from. So, so pretty, so basically by my working on myself in that moment and seeing where I can take this experience of self criticism and turn it around into something positive through action, through observation, through not going into the negativity. I mean, it was still there, but I didn't, I didn't let it take over. I set a timer and then when that timer went off, I was done. And how was I done? I just, I moved on to the next thing. I got super interested in something else. I got completely focused on the next task. It's a situation where you can find your own way through it by getting interested in something else, by getting interested in yourself, by getting interested in things around you in the room. If, you, if self-focus becomes too absorbed, sometimes we get so absorbed in the negativity that focusing on self can just spin that energy. And so getting focused on something outside of myself that I can put my focus into and my attention and that I am good at allowed me to get out of my, my own way. And I didn't destroy a relationship or damage a relationship with Angie in the process because I didn't then take it to her and say, why are you mad at me? Are you mad at me? I'm so bad. Make me feel better. I didn't put my needs on her. I let my needs be my own. And then when I talked to her about it later, it was from a place of, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. And her saying, yeah, it happens. It's okay. Done. There was nothing more to be said. There was no assuming, no need to assume. There was no, there was nothing between us. And so when you take that into your relationships with your husband or your children, when you've been raised by a narcissist in, or you have had narcissistic abuse in your past to the point where it has programmed you, um, you can use the, you can use your own self work to then better your relationships because you're not putting your needs, which you should be taking care of yourself onto other people. And that way the relationship between you and that other person, be it your husband or your child, is a more pure and authentic relationship because it's based on what's actually happening, not what you're assuming is happening. I hope that makes sense and I hope that is helpful. Related to that, there was another question that said, I've always, I've always had negative self-talk and I always doubted my capabilities and my worth. I believe that's why it was so easy for my ex to manipulate me for so long. How do I change this? She goes on to say she knows she's capable and has a lot of successes in a lot of areas of her life, but she still seeks validation from others. So again, I think this can apply. For most people, it's not a constant. It's not a constant feeling of, of, of lack of worth, especially in a situation like that where you see that you have worth. So focusing on that worth in a way where you can see how it benefits the world, you can see how it benefits your own life, you can see how it be your, the thing that you see as successful or, or worthwhile in you, you can see where it reaches beyond yourself. And in that way, it makes it less constricted. It opens it up to a bigger picture. And then seeking validation from other people, I mean, a lot of that is practice. A lot of that is, just like I said, realizing that it is, not the other person's responsibility to take care of my emotional needs. It's nice when someone does it, and it's great when you have a relationship where that comes freely on occasion, but to do it all the time, as you said, is codependent. So to break away from that, we have to start finding ways to see our own worth. Um, that's one place coaching can help. That's one place a therapist can help. Um, on your own, you can be working on exactly like I said, which was to set some time aside to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and then put an end to it by setting a timer and moving on. And you move on by 
focusing on the things you know you're good at in a way that is captivating, in a way that holds your attention and, and allows you to move through that feeling and allows that feeling to fade away. Another way is mindfulness practice. You can um, set aside time when you feel that way, go ahead and feel it, and then do a mindfulness meditation for 10 minutes, and then come back to your day and see how you're feeling. I mean, it's a lot of checking in with yourself and a lot of, a lot of catching the feeling as it's happening, allow it to be there, and then move past it. Um, it's when we engage with the feeling. It's when, we, it's when we feel this lack of self-worth and we go fully into it and we fully engage with that negativity to the point where we start seeking the validation from somebody else, that that's where the trouble starts. Because in that moment, you lose the authenticity of your relationship with the other person. And it is totally okay to ask someone, hey, am I doing a good job here? Hey, is this, how's this working for you? What does this feel like for you? Or, you know, to see, to check in with someone, to see that kind of validation can be healthy. It's when we need validation to know we are okay, that, that it becomes unhealthy. And so it's finding balance. It's, and for that person, I'd be really interested to know what they feel their, their worth is since they said they see it. They do see their worth and their value in, a certain, in certain situations and they see their, I would be really interested to know that and then to take those things and grow them or grow other parts of them or see how they relate back to other areas of that person's life. And so you see it's, I hope that gives some examples of ways to shift your negativity that you feel about yourself into something positive and how that can be actually creative energy. Because once you start shifting that negative to the positive, a creative energy comes, comes into you and you begin, to, you begin to feel more energetic and motivated towards life. How about you? Any questions related to this? What are your experiences when it comes to negative self-talk and how did you find your way out? Help other, other tips you can give to help other people through who feel negative about themselves and would like to change? Let me know in the comments below. Hit subscribe and see you next time.